Hey, good morning. All right, uh, yeah, I got a quick, quick, easy verse to go over here. And uh, yeah, he's just showing me one thing after another, and I think this is very relevant to today. Um, so much, so many different things going out there. All right, it's uh, Titus 2.1. First, I'll, you know, read it the way it is in most of our Bibles. Then I'll go back and take every word back to its origin and read it that way. Um, so we get a much more clear understanding of what, what's being put forth there. All right, so here we go. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Pretty short, pretty simple. But uh, uh, way oversimplified. So let's take a look at this and see, see what he's trying to say here. But moreover, tell him words to declare of one's mind, to teach, to exhort, to advise, to command and direct with words, to call out by name, to put forth you whom are not perfect, uh, in all your inflections. Um, we've heard that before, many verses, you know, straying from the path, even though you're not perfect, even though you're straying from the path, okay? Stand out to be conspicuous. And uh, he wanted me to look up the word conspicuous. And that means to look at attentively, okay? Intensive, a, an intensive look to study, to study something. Intensive look, right? The scriptures, I'm sure, his word. Intensively study, abide in my word daily, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, to become fit, to be of sound opinion, free from any mixture of error, uh, restored, to become restored to health, teaching which does not deviate from the truth, to, to cause, to grow up inwardly, a multitude of people, to be active, to teach them to be active, to give an increase teaching concerning the things of God and the duties of man used by Jesus himself to show men the way of salvation with the assistance of his Holy Spirit to discharge the office of a teacher. We're, we're, we're called to make disciples. That's what we're called to do. We're called to uh, agitate and disturb, which I went over in multiple other verses, to agitate and stir the minds of men by teaching sound doctrine through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit to put forth out to everybody else to stand apart. Uh, we're, we're set apart. We're separated. We, we, we stand separate from other people because we, we are being used of God and, and that, that, that differentiates us from the world, which should be the case, which causes a lot of people actually to uh, uh, not not want to be around you sometimes. You know what I mean? That's what it does because they don't want to hear it. Uh, they don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to, they have their own understanding. Okay, but we're, we're called out and set apart to take an intentive look and study at his word. And only through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit can he reveal, can he open the scrolls and unroll the scrolls to you. All right, so he can use you. And we're supposed to teach this so that other people can do the same in their realm of influence around their friends and family and the people they interact with on a daily basis. Uh, we can't do it all. The world's a big place. Um, so we're called to make teachers, to make disciples of men and to send them out in their area so that they can do the same, right? Okay, so the things of God and the duties of man used by Jesus himself to show men the way of salvation through the end, with and through the assistance of his Holy Spirit to discharge the office of a teacher, to make disciples, to instill doctrine, to be enjoined so that they can be enjoined with his Holy Spirit and with us, with fellow believers, right? To learn from, and we're supposed to learn from each other. Not everybody knows everything. And uh, we're all at different levels. We're all still learning, I'm still learning. And uh, actually, some questions I get. I got a question the other day, you know, uh, about uh, when we're raptured, you know, why I believe 
like our bodies won't go. And I, and, I, and I know firmly that I was taught by the Holy Spirit and I've seen in multiple other verses, you know, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. But this person made me go back and, uh, you know, look at things close, more close, closely and studied a whole bunch of different passages, which increased my knowledge. And um, I mean, it's a good thing. So this person's obviously a believer and they want to study and learn and uh, as, as we all should. And um, yeah, so anyways, uh, it, was, it was good that I was able to do that. And uh, look, who, the mansion spoken of in heaven uh, in multiple verses when you take every word back to their origin say it's, it's metaphorically a body. And we're supposed to be transformed to be like him in a glorified body, right? Christ is in a glorified body now. Even the disciples really didn't recognize him at first, even though he was walking with them, right? Because he's in a glorified body now, but he still bears the mark of his crucifixion and his torture and what he did for us. Um, he still bears the, that mark. But Jesus Christ, you have to understand, he was not in sinful flesh. He was in flesh, but he wasn't sinful. So... I know the scriptures say we, we are to put off one thing, the corrupt, in the flesh. If you understand what it is, your flesh is the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We were clothed in the skin of the serpent. And, and I'm telling you, if you take a deeper study, I'm trying to agitate your mind, take a deeper study. You'll see that too, but only the Holy Spirit can open it up and make you want to see it. And you got to want to see it. And it ain't wanting to see what I just taught you. It's wanting to see the truth in God's word by studying his word, taking, a, a, like it says in this verse, a more in-depth, uh, intensive study to be conspicuous, right? To look at attentively, all right? And abide in his word daily, okay? So understand what our bodies are, what this world is. Uh, like I said, look at Genesis one twenty six, the word for image there. Uh, and look at uh, Psalms 82.6. Uh, what, what we are all what? Children of Most High, but we are all gods. We are all Elohim, it says. Okay, we know we're not the Supreme God. So people who use that word for the Supreme God, he's the one in charge of. Okay, there, in, there's a whole lot more into it. Uh, and I perhaps need to study that one a little more. But I know what it says, and I understand. And I don't just understand from my own knowledge. I understand from the indwelling of his Holy Spirit that's speaking to me. Okay, so the only way you, you can become a good teacher of his word is if the Holy Spirit's speaking through you. But he'll only do that to people who are ready to receive it. You have to come before the Lord as a child with a humble heart, willing to learn. Like, you can't... Look, let me, let me give you... a. Well, let's finish this, and I'll give you a quick example. Okay, so um, this verse of Jesus himself, through the assistance of his Holy Spirit, which is the only one that can really teach correctly is his Holy Spirit, to discharge the office of a teacher, to instill doctrine, to be enjoined so that others can be enjoined with his Holy Spirit, to go out into the world in their area of influence, to teach the gospel as well, okay, to, to the people they come in contact with. Um, to be enjoined from within, from within, from within, enjoined from what? If it says from within, his Holy Spirit, right? For a specific purpose. To be enjoined for a specific purpose. To be used of God, to be active. We're supposed to be active. To be active and give an increase. To give an increase and be active. That's what we're called to do. And uh, people don't like that, man. They, they, they like believing what they've been taught. Right, they have their own little version of what they believe this world is and what their bodies are, and uh, who God is. They have in their own mind; it's been instilled in them, mostly by men, by men, by the teaching of men. And that's why the Bible says, "Let no man teach you." The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth and righteousness. He's the only one that can lead you into all truth and righteousness. Only when Christ opens that scroll and lifts that veil that's in front of. You're, that's blocking your mind. You're, you're, we're all blind. We're born into... Jesus came to heal the blind, the deaf, right? The sick. That's us. That's all of us. That's just not people who are blind and sick and maimed and deaf. That's all of us are in that condition when we're born into this world. You don't understand what your bodies are. You don't understand what this world is. You have no clue until you study his word. But only the Holy Spirit himself can open your eyes. You have to take every single word you can back to its origin. And completely depend on his Holy Spirit to teach you. 
That's that's right way. And I'm not saying other men are doing a bad job. They do a good job introducing you to Christ. But don't take what men are teaching you from their own understanding. Okay. Look, the, in Daniel, uh, it says that the uh, words of the book were going to be locked up till that time of the end. When people are running to and fro, and knowledge is increased. And then it says in the end days, God's going to pour out his Holy Spirit. So he's doing that. These are the end days. It's what's happening. And my people are not children of darkness. No, we're not going to be overcome like a thief in the night. We're not going to be surprised, right? The Pharisees and Sadducees who knew those scriptures, man, inside and out, they had them memorized. But yet they couldn't see their Messiah standing right in front of them. Okay. So what do you think our preachers and pastors and priests and everybody in the churches are today? You know, not everybody sees everything. They do a good job, but you have to take it. It's an individual relationship with Christ. And you have to have that individual relationship. And the only way you get that individual relationship with him is if, you're, if he fills you with his Holy Spirit. And you have to be willing to learn like a child with a humble heart. And we're called to be active, to stir the minds of men so that you'll look at, I say things that, and not just me, many other people too, say things people never heard of in church before. And most likely, unfortunately, never will. All right, so anyways, so let me give you an example. Look, I was in the Marine Corps, right? And uh, when I went in, when we were learning how to uh, shoot our weapon, okay, they... <laughs> They want to teach you. They, they'd rather have someone come in who knows nothing at all about shooting so they can train them step by step the way they want you to shoot. And it's a proven method um, for accuracy. It's proven. But if you come in with already preconceived notions because you've already hunted and shot your father or grandfather and you've been taught how to shoot through your life, they have a hard time teaching you, okay? They have a hard time. It's difficult to get those preconceived ideas of yours out of your mind to fill you with the proper way to be taught, to uh, learn how to shoot, the steps. There's, there's, there's steps to it, you know, breathe, relax. You know, there's, there's a whole lot of things that go into it that... that there's steps and it, and it needs to become natural. Um, like in the Marine Corps, you think just getting dressed, you know, you have a certain habit maybe of your own getting dressed. But when you're in the Marine Corps, when you first jump out of the rack <laughs> in boot, they'll tell you, uh, left sock on, you put it on. Right sock on, you put the right sock on. They'll say, nope, too slow or too fast or so-and-so didn't want to be with everybody else. Take them back off. Let's start it again. Left sock on, right sock on. You know, uh, put on your your pants. You know, left foot in first, right, then your right foot. There's a there's a procedure, and they want to drill it into your head over and over and over and over, so it becomes natural, so it becomes a, a habit, so uh, you don't even have to think about it. And the same thing like in wrestling. I wrestled as well. When you're learning, and anybody who does any sport, you know this. It's repetition, 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 repetition. And God is very repetitive in his word. Very repetitive. Uh, over and over and over. And there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. And you're only going to see that repetition in, when you take every word back to its origin. Um, there's a story. There's, there's, there's something he wants you to know for a fact. He wants you to know what your body is, what this world is, how you got here, what's going on here. Um, he wants you to know that you need to be indwelt with his Holy Spirit. You have to have a relationship with him. And you only have that relationship when you're born again of his Holy Spirit, like Jesus told Nicodemus, right? And John, you must be born again of spirit or you will not see the kingdom of heaven, nor will you enter into it. You, <laughs> and it's repetitive. It's repetitive from the very beginning all the way to the very end, from Gen, uh, Genesis all the way through Revelations. He repeats a story, but it's, it's in the text. It's, it's, I'm not gonna say it's hidden. It's, it's kind of uh, encoded in there um, when you take every word back to its origin. But see, you, you have to want it by studying his word. You're only going to see it if you study his word and stick in it. Be like Jacob. Hold on. Hold on to the angel of the Lord until he blesses you. And he will. And he will. 
because he loves us all and he wants us all to come to repentance and turn back to our Father who is in heaven, right? He wants us to come home, home, okay? This world is not our home. We weren't supposed to be here. But he has a plan, and it's a perfect plan, and he gave all his children, we are all children of the Most High, the Bible says, but he did call certain people, Sadducees, Pharisees, uh, the children of their father, the devil. Look, you... I seen a little exhortation from David Benu, who's a great studies the Bible, brother in Christ about the serpent seed. And he's correct in a lot of what he says, but we're all mixed with it when we're born into this world. <laughs> understand that. Understand that. Uh, there's there's a lineage that is is, is from uh, Adam and Eve, right? That was pure. That was pure. And that's why Jesus' lineage is traced back to Seth, their third son, and not Cain. Understand this. Understand this. Because it's pure. Cain was from another seed. There's two different seeds working in this world. And we've all become intermixed. Okay? Study the Bible for yourself. There's a, there's, it's so beautiful. Um, it's, it's almost time to go. It's almost time to go. You can see things happening really quick in the world. And uh, it might seem like this pandemic, plandemic, whatever it is, you know, and they're staging bricks in these protest sites. They're busing in people. People are being paid. They got phone numbers written on their arms to get bailed out. They're guaranteed to get bailed out if they get sent to jail. Look, man, this is all planned. It's all planned. Uh, Satan's making his move. He's making his move. You can see it coming. You can see it coming. Um, understand where we are. Do not be deceived. Jesus himself said multiple times, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. All right. Love and respect everybody. Hope you got a, a deeper understanding of that verse. It's very short, but when you look into it, we're called to uh, create disciples of men, uh, but only through his Holy Spirit to impart that, to make people study, agitate the minds of men so that they become active in their area of influence and create more, uh, bring people into repentance and return to God by being indwelt by his Holy Spirit. Get that gift, right? Free gift through the grace of God. But you gotta want it, right? All right, God bless you. Love, respect everybody. Have a great day. Bye.